I also spoke to Alain Ebobise, CEO of Africa 50, and we discussed the importance of infrastructure in the drive to build a resilient continent. Let's start by just getting your perspective on how we can build infrastructure to implement the Africa Common Free Trade Area. That's obviously the big discussion across the continent right now. Um, from where you sit, what are your thoughts on that? Well, thank you, uh, Wally, for inviting me on your program. Uh, it's an important matter. You know, I believe that uh, the successful implementation of the AFCFTA uh, will not only require uh, policy coordination, but also enabling infrastructure, uh, because this is the backbone for an efficient unified, unified market. You see, uh, trading goods will take off if you have adequate roads, rail, railways, ports, etc. So I believe that uh, having the right uh, cross-border infrastructure will help Africa uh, further industrialize and expand market opportunities, especially for the 16 landlocked countries that we have here. And this is where Africa 50, the organization that I lead, can actually help uh, implement uh, those cross-border infrastructures, which are so important for the AFCFTA. I think uh, many African development challenges, uh, such as the electricity supply and transportation, require cross-border solutions. So building regional infrastructure will not just only uh, speed up implementation of the AFCFTA, but also put the continent on a long-term growth trajectory. Finally, think about it. You know, with the AFCFTA, Africa becomes a market of 1.3 billion peoples where goods can flow freely. Uh, all this creates new markets where really creative investors uh, will find excellent opportunities to make positive impact and make money. Right. All right, so you mentioned ports, roads, railways. I probably would add pipelines to that as well, potentially, and yes. maybe airports as well. But I have one word for you. How? How do we implement? How do we get these projects off the ground? Well, look, I think that's uh, a fair question because, uh, you know, while we have seen good progress in infrastructure investments um, in, in Africa over the last uh, few years, um, we haven't seen as much progress on the regional side of infrastructure. Out of a total of $100 billion invested in infrastructure in Africa in 2019, for example, only about 2% uh, of this amount went into regional infrastructure projects. So I think we need to significantly increase the volume of investments that go into regional infrastructure. And that is hard, but the good news is that with the AFCFTA, we, we now have the regional consensus and the long-term framework that transcend borders, and that will help actually uh, implement, uh, make those the project implementation uh, easier, I guess. But you know what, at the end of the day, uh, to meet uh, the big financing needs that we need to, to, to close the gap, uh, the infrastructure gap, we must make regional projects, we must make actually infrastructure projects bankable, and attractive for global and African private investors. And one of the things that is really missing today, at least not in a sufficient uh, uh, amount, is project preparation and project development resources. We need more of this to help build up a pipeline, a pipeline of bankable investment ready regional project and infrastructure project in general. This is what Africa 50 is doing. But frankly, we want to see a lot more players active in this space and a lot more resources. So at the end of the day, we need to attract more private investment into that space right. uh, to make sure that we can reduce the gap. Financing is often a challenge for many of these issues in, on, in Africa. So I wanted to hear from you about potential financing sources that you can speak to that um, project sponsors or promoters can begin to look to tap. Now, today, there's a consensus. Everybody knows that uh, government funding uh, alone cannot bridge the financing gap that we see in the infrastructure space. Uh, so the continent must attract more private investors uh, to come into, you know, invest in this space. Uh, this is also part of our mandate at Africa 50, uh, and I'm glad we're making progress uh, uh, in this space. But I also want to say that the AFCFTA will make uh, this activity a bit more attractive, like regional project. Because some investors seek projects with larger 
offtake market. And so with the AFCFTA, you will have a bigger uh, market. One of the financing source that we are focusing on at Africa 50, and, and frankly, many people should be focusing on that, is institutional investors. Uh, since infrastructure is actually a type of asset class that, that they like, uh, generally speaking, but we are not seeing enough of institutional investors' capital invested in infrastructure in Africa. You know, the AFDB, the African Development Bank, uh, has estimated that in Africa alone, institutional investors, they have close to $2 trillion of asset under management. If we could mobilize just a fraction of this, uh, I think right. we could help close the, the gap. Again, this is one source that we are looking for because we have to look for uh, mobilizing capital from our domestic sources right in Africa, you know, as well as we are looking for money globally. But here in Africa, we have some money that we have to try to tap. And one of the uh, structures that we have been proposing, framework that we have been proposing to attract institutional investors' capital is asset recycling, a way essentially to, you know, find some of the existing infrastructure assets which government owns and they don't, they no longer need to own. They can concession those assets uh, to you know, investors such as Africa 50s and others, and we right. will put together structures that can attract and strengthen investors' capital for them to invest in this asset. You're talking toll road, power, uh, power plant, fiber optic airport. So we have a lot of opportunities to do these kind of things. To f finally, uh, I like to say, uh, you know, we, we know how to do these things. And frankly, there are a number of those projects that have been put together on the continent. But what we need to see is more speed in execution. Right. We need to everybody to understand that it costs money uh, and it's huge loss of opportunity, opportunity cost to delay project implementation. So we need to be yeah. faster and then we need to go to do a lot more of uh, what we already know how to do.